Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the SUP Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Luke Trevisi. With me, as always, I got the boys with me. Uh, to my left, I got Chris Cheney. What up, what up? And then also to my left is Lawrence Deloach. Hey, what's going on? How's it going, everybody? How we feeling? Chris, are you out of quarantine yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're uh, officially done uh, today, actually. So all of us tested negative. We're good to fucking go. I can go to the office tomorrow. Big news. Good for you, buddy. Thank Congratulations, you. Congratulations, bro. I'm, I'm excited yes. for you, man. That's... Didn't get COVID the entire time. I stood strong. Nice. It was just you and, and Mike Coscarelli in the basement together, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, which I ended up doing his podcast, Mike Coscarelli Rules. Um, so yeah. you can go check that out. I was uh, the guest that week just because we were quarantined and he had nobody else to do it with. Yeah, I texted him earlier today because he did a he did a piece on Ava Gardner and Frank Sinatra that he was like really insecure about. And I was like, no, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so go check that out. So Friend go check show. that out. Yeah, 100 percent. Lawrence, how you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling good. Uh, we got uh, one more week to the Super Bowl, so I'm I'm, I'm excited for that. Uh, I want to see uh, Brady and Mahomes. That's that's the old versus the, the new. And, what do you um, got? You got the young buck? I, yeah, I want to see Mahomes win a second one, you know, talk, stop that. I mean, Brady's the, the quote unquote goat, but we got a new goat in town soon. So let's let's go Mahomes. You don't want to see Brady mouth kiss his son. I don't want to see Brady. Mouth you love kiss anyone. Bringing that up, dude. You love that shit. It's the because it's it's iconic, bro. Yeah. Name another football player who's kissing his son on the mouth. Nobody. I don't know. Um, Drew Brees probably does. Yeah, but that's for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> He wants that. He wants that MAGA taste in his mouth. <laughs> Gross. He's like num 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 num. Ignorance, my favorite. <laughs> What's good with you, Luke? Oh, buddy, I've had a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, worse than mine? No, probably not. But I did have somebody do some clown shit on on Facebook. I was trying to sell some sneakers. Oh, tell us. Yeah. So I had a guy. So I had a pair of uh, of Griffies, Freshwaters. Uh, that I've been holding on to for a little bit. I was trying to get rid of them. Some guy hit me up in, in Facebook Messenger that was like, oh, you know, so I saw those shoes are for sale. And then he was like, can I see more pictures? Sent him more pictures. And then we went back and forth for like six hours because he was like, which is way too long when you're doing a sneaker sale online. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, you're just like, OK, well, why? Why are you asking all of these questions? He's like, OK, well, how long have you had them? He's like, what about this? <laughs> <laughs> and then the, I was like, where are the scoffs? And I'm like, you I sent you 62 pictures already. Could you please leave me alone? Mm -hmm. And then we get all the way to the actual pricing. And I'm like, finally, this is going to fucking close. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, I'm looking for 140. And he's like, well, can you do 100? And I was like, uh, best I'll do is 120. And he said, well, I'm really trying to pay 100. And I was like, all right, well, I can't do that. And then he hits me with the dumbest shit <laughs> I've heard <laughs> in my life. Uh-huh. I, I'm going to just show you what I posted on my Instagram here. It says, I was going to offer 100. And then I said, best I could do is 120 shipped. And he said, not bad, but I have 100, though, to spend. Not going to lie. Sorry, bro. Can't swing it then. Prayer I, hands. Prayer hands, because I want to be respectful. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to tell you you're broke to your face. And then he goes, I right, if I do, is it possible if you can ship the shoes out and I look at them and I pay you after once I see they look good? If not, I just ship back. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck that's the most ass backward shit i've ever heard in my life get the fuck out and then i blocked him because wasted my time luke that was when i saw it on your instagram feed uh i laughed so loud i had to just reshare i wanted my followers to just see <laughs> how fucking funny it was bro like i've dealt with so many people just like that like i don't i don't really do like the facebook marketplace sells anymore but like in my day when i've sold sneakers to people the amount of haggling and dumb questions that you get like it makes you upset yeah, yeah. absolutely and then he posted this other thing uh he posted a response and he's like this childish asf so i was finna make a shoe deal right I ask a dude about these shoes since I got scammed before from a dude in New York. I want to protect myself from that happening again. <laughs> Look, what, in, what voice is this? I, yeah, so it's, it's the voice of a dumbass. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool, 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 cool. I, I've been in the shoe game too long. I haven't scammed anyone. <laughs> 
as people that may deal with me. I'm valid, which is fucking bullshit. It's strangers on the Internet. Yeah, this is a uh, yeah. And this then is... everybody in the comments is like, no, you're a clown. You're you're a clown. Yeah, that's I mean, come on, man. You don't. You don't you don't do that at Foot Locker. You don't say, hey, Foot Locker, let me just uh, let me just buy the let me just get these shoes real quick. Test them out. See if they valid. If, yeah, let me take them for a spin. Let me go around the block real quick. Let me test drive these these sneakers. out. I mean, people like I said, man. And and the sad thing is these this is one hundred and you know, twenty hundred and forty dollars sneakers. Like, yeah. like, it's not like these are he like he's you're not trying to scam him out of two thousand dollars. You're trying like it, you're not scamming. You're just trying to sell. So I think that's why I don't like dealing with the back and forth with people. I used to do it on eBay all the time. I fucking hated it. So Ooh, I've had some bad interactions on eBay. The uh, the people on Poshmark love to ask if it's mm -hmm. still available. And mm -hmm. then when you say yes, they just ghost. They just ghost. <laughs> I've seen that. Still available? Uh, yeah. What do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing. <laughs> so. so before we go on, because we got a cut, we got a lot of things planned for today. Right. We got to go into uh, neutral grays for one mm -hmm. thing. Get a little bit into those uh, those trophy rooms. Yeah, we got some uh, we got some foam posits to talk about for the first time in what, like five years. Yeah, yeah. very exciting. Uh, let's get into socials real quick. Well, where can everybody find you guys? You can find me at not that Cheney. Uh, L is uh, LZD three, two, five. That's correct. Um, young Trevisus, the God over here, Trevisus and then three Meany. and three Meany. And if you want to follow the podcast, uh, sub podcast NYC. Uh, if you want to email us at podcastnyc at gmail, we have a phone number too. If you want to call us, that's going to be in the bio. Join our Discord. And if you are listening to this, uh, take a picture, put it in your story, and uh, tag us in it. We'll share it. It helps us a lot. Don't yeah. forget to don't forget to uh, like and subscribe our podcast on iTunes. Give us five stars. Write a cool review. Yeah. Tell us what you like and what you don't like. Well, just tell us what you like and tell us who's your favorite, yo, because that's always important. <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence loves that shit. I love that shit, Because he gets yo. picked every time. I get picked. Yo, I, that shit used to be fun, yo. I used to love watching Chris face, and they'd be like, yo, why they talking shit about me and they loving Lawrence? Yo, that shit pisses me <laughs> off. But yeah. That's the game, yo. That's how it is. That's the game. So what are we going to start with this week, yo? What are, are we starting Are we starting with stonks? Should we go to stonks first? Should we Should we stonk, stonk this? It. Let's, let's stonk, stonk it out. It up, yeah. And, and get the... And let's just keep it moving after that. Where, where do we go? Baby. We, we, we to the fucking moon. That's all I can That's say. That's where we're going. No paper hands, baby. Um. So before we really get into this, though, I want to make an advisor and a, like a general thing. We are. This is not a stock podcast. We do not know exactly what's going on or how this works. This is entertainment. This is for yes. entertainment. All right. Um. But God damn, I love Reddit. Yeah, I it's love Reddit so too. cool. I do. It's yo. So. How do we explain this? Does anyone have enough information to actually explain this correctly, Lawrence? Maybe I think you might be able to do it the best. I, oh yeah, so I'm I'm the I'm the fucking explanation <laughs> guy on stocks. Like yeah, really, I'm the fucking probably the worst with my money. But no, what I, what I will say is um, no. I, I, I what we saw is I guess we saw these uh, these hedge fund dudes. They they were shorting stocks basically. They were betting that these stocks that these companies would would go under. And uh, and, you know, which isn't a, it's not the the it's it's part of the, the stock game, but it's also fucked up. So these short these these hedge dudes were shorting GameStop, 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 stock, stock, GameStop, <laughs> GameStop, GameStop, stock. Stock. GameStop. <laughs> and and this, these dudes at, at Reddit, uh, Wall Street bets, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, these guys, uh, they they figured they came together and they were like, we're going to drive up the price of some of these stocks that are being shorted. I saw it be compared to the 2008 mortgage crisis uh, in that it involved a lot of people betting against something. Right. And then people right. buying against that bet. Correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. The housing market crash was a little I mean, that was like the 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 lending was a little bit out of control. People couldn't pay it pay right, their right. mortgage so yeah but this to me is is completely it's a different ball game bro like like you have people banding together and and i think what what, what makes it interesting to me is you have all these uh these these hedge fund dudes you know they're like they're going bankrupt and and then it got to the point where 
you have these the stock the GameStop was what four dollars a share it was fucking cheap people yeah. had you know all these the stock and then by Tuesday of the, this week it was you know three hundred dollars you know Elon Musk is tweeting about it because Elon has his own issues with you know with hedge funds and and, and short uh, sellers as well because they try yeah. to do that shit with Tesla yeah. yeah so that just continued to drive up the price but at this point now you know we see a lot of these uh these like robin hood and all these other uh you know these brokers or whatever they started limiting the that the 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 buyability of these stocks yeah which is fucked up <clears throat> super fucked up yeah bro so i i was you know i was like really shy because it's such a um you know like people are becoming or we're getting like they were getting paid off of this shit Hello, so, bro. Someone, someone from my hometown is up a hundred stacks, a hundred grand. Really? Yeah. Really. So I, th- I thought it was interesting, and and then just to see that, like, you know, Robinhood, which is supposed to be, you know, we're supposed to be in a, a free market, like, you know, this is this is what America and this is what this country is supposed to be about, and then you have Robinhood, like, basically limiting what people can 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 do. And I think as a as a sneaker podcast, I know, you know, we're, we're kind of talking about this as best as we can. But like we need to equate this to the shoe world, you know? Yeah. yeah so, you know, why don't we refer to our version of the stock market, which would be stock X. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Luke. Yes. In what scenario do you think you could create where you could recreate this situation with GameStop using stock X? I would I would say we have to buy up all of the pairs of shoes and then just charge a crazy markup on them. So like what if Lawrence say posted on StockX some all black Air Force ones? Let me pull them up right now for you. Let's <clears> see <throat> the price. So I got black Air Force ones currently priced at around $75, $85. So would this work? <clears throat> Say I buy Lawrence's pair of all black tw- uh, Air Force Ones for like twelve hundred dollars. Right. <laughs> and then and then I put them back on that same shoe. Right. We could do this with one pair, I think, technically. And then, Luke, you buy it for fifteen hundred. Right. And then, Lawrence, <laughs> how about you buy that? I, I don't think you know how this is. Right. I don't think you I don't. Chris, I really don't, I don't think, think you're doing this right. All right, Chris, this is, okay. this is the thing. And this is the best way to put it. Remember these sh- these stock shorting these guys who short stocks, right? Remember uh-huh. they're borrowing the stock from someone. Remember, right. so they're like, "Yo, I'm gonna take this stock at ten dollars, right? Yeah, I'm gonna borrow it, and then I'm going to sell it at five dollars, and I'm gonna pocket, you know, the rest. Like, the and I'm gonna give you yeah. back your stock. So now, when the stock is going up. Remember, they shorted it at a certain. They bought it at a certain, or borrowed it at a certain price. So right now, they're they're in a they're in a hole. So there's no limit to how high that stock can go. So that what we have to do in terms of sneakers to stocks is if a motherfucker borrowed all these sneakers from Foot Locker, right? He borrowed all these Air Force Ones. He uh-huh. borrowed every Air Force One and was like, "Yo, I'm gonna sell." These retail at a hundred dollars. I'm gonna like borrow them from you, and that, see. This is why. This is why I'm not good at stocks. Like, well, no, I think I'm, so. Here, this is what I was trying to do. So, okay, StockX watches every sale and every every purchase is rec- right. on record, right? And on the bottom of the site on the sneaker, you could see the uh, the charts of right. like it got popular, it came down, whatever. So what I'm saying is, if we just use this one pair of Air Force Ones, right? Well, we're not really spending the money. You know what I mean? Like, I'll buy the shoe for twelve hundred dollars. But like, you give me that back. We're just trying to fuck with that graph and that scale. Okay. statistics about that shoe. What we would really have to do is we'd have to circulate twelve hundred dollars between us. Right. So that's what I'm saying. So next four years. (laughs) (laughs) So if if we keep buying the same pair of Air Force Ones at like exponentially grow it grow, like so we start off with 12 then we buy for 15 then we buy for 17 then we buy it for 2k right all that is going to be recorded in their data and then people are going to be like yo people are spending two thousand dollars on black or air force one yeah people are going to look for the photo of like where is travis scott wearing black air force ones because this spike does not make any sense Wait, other- okay no this kind of makes sense because if, okay. if, if it keeps happening here's what's going to happen 
other people are going to notice it. And then it's going to be like, well, if, if there's a hundred sales for $2,000 worth of black Air Force <laughs> one, right? If there's a hundred sales okay. of that, that means that's the price of the, the black Air Force one now. Right. Okay. Right. If we do that enough, People are going to be like, this is the most valuable. This is the Black Air Force One. <laughs> so if we just this is the mean keep shoe. buying, buying uh -huh. the Black Air Force One. <laughs> then it just keeps going up. And it just keeps going up. It's going up. So it's going to inflate the value of the shoe and fuck up the rest of the market because that's a general release shoe. Anyone could buy that. Right. So people are just going to buy all Black Air Force Ones and put uh -huh. them on StockX and try to sell them for two grand. <laughs> Oh, this is right. hilarious to me. This is not financial advice. This is no, this it's is, not. This is three fucking. <laughs> uh, what what do these dudes call each other on on uh, on Reddit? Wall Street uh, uh, bets on Reddit. They call each other like autistic Weeps. dudes, uh, <laughs> apes, <laughs> retards. They call each other all <laughs> apes. Um, the uh, incels. Yeah, we are three apes just trying <laughs> to fucking just trying to get some bananas, bro. Trying to get some bananas. We are trying to like. I just like. <laughs> I just like saying we t we going to the fucking moon. Like I just love saying that <laughs> everywhere I go now. Like yeah, you know, I went to the fucking Chick Fil A and they was like, "What would you like?" I was like, "I like to go to the moon." Like I swear <laughs> to God, like that's that's where I'm at in my life right now. I just want to go to the moon. Oh, uh, but it, it 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 it's interesting because you do see um and 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 when we talk about manipulation because this is a, this is a big you know issue in terms of stock manipulations like you know restrictions on what people can buy we see that a lot in in stock x where we see sometimes you'll see an inflated market for a pair of shoes and you're like is stock x fucking controlling the market is are they manipulating certain shoe sales yeah i yeah. see it happen a lot it is an unregulated market so. um i think i brought it up before now i don't I don't remember exactly what it was, but StockX does do like these auctions where we can uh, put a like a like a dollar amount on a sneaker when the, sh the sneaker's not even set at retail. I think it was a Ben Baller sandal. Like they didn't come out retail, and StockX was like, "All right, hey, we're gonna have an auction. Like, so whoever wants to pay the most can buy it." Mm -hmm. And I think. They didn't even say the retail. They just let people just bid on it, and it ended up being like five hundred dollars, a couple hundred dollars for this sandal. But no one even knew the retail price. Mm. Right. So you want to talk about like unregulated back end stuff? Like they didn't even give us the retail. They said this is priceless and worthless at the same time. They're like, here, you guys figure it out. And because right. of what the hype, what the hype train is, which is I guess similar to what um, you know, like the hype that GameStop was given no, by the if redditors. If you really want to talk about like a stock that has like a one to one sneaker to stock value, it's Doge, Dogecoin. Oh, because good old crypto. Yeah, Dogecoin, crypto. Dogecoin has no inherent value. OK, mm -hmm. it's a meme. It, it is a meme stock. It is a meme cryptocurrency that is made. They, they make a billion of them mm -hmm. and then they can make more whenever. Just like real money. There's yeah, like no, the U.S. dollar. There's, there's mm -hmm. no actual value to it. It's what the value that the community puts on it. Hype. Right. It's hype, exactly. And you notice when whenever Doge goes up, it's because Elon Musk tweets about it. There's one time a porn star tweeted about it. Like the only time it fluctuates in price is when there's hype behind it. How did what what made you look at the uh, porn star's feed there, Luke? Oh, it was already on my feed. Come on, man. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I already followed her. I'm an avid okay. fan. Just just curious. <laughs> uh, but she <laughs> she tweeted about Dogecoin, and everybody was like, "To the moon, baby." to the moon <laughs> but that's basically what how all sneakers work they only have value past the inherent retail value of whatever it, you know what i mean it's yeah. just whatever the market decides on it so okay. I, I wish i would i would love to see sneaker heads like start fucking with the market on on stock x by being like oh we're only going to offer a hundred dollars on these strange loves and then everybody only offers a hundred dollars on these strange and now the value of these strange love has gone down significantly in order to do that, we would need like a bunch of people to like be willing to do that. The you only need everyone. Well, yeah. that that's what made this whole GameStop uh, uh, so interesting because people like came together on this. Like like you said, yeah. you you have to, and and you know, and obviously you know, people are holding the stock to try to you know keep it keep shooting up. But in a situation like a pair of strange loves, like you said, like with sneakers, people, they can't do that. They're like, uh, you know, like you said, if people were like the max I'm going to pay is two hundred dollars for these shoes, then what would the resellers do? 
they could they can only sell them for you know what people are willing to pay but people are so fucking hungry that you know they'll pay oh i'll pay 700 i'll pay 800 like it's it's how the sneaker game works yeah well now that they're in the white house maybe maybe things will change maybe sneakers will be lame Strange. Oh, I thought you were gonna say strange loves in the White House. No, that but, would uh, be crazy. <laughs> I mean, it, it's gonna be like that. Biden's gonna walk out, jump off Joe Biden, win some strange loves in like that Gucci North Face jacket. Oh, it's gonna be mad funny. All I know is Joe Biden need to give my other my fourteen hundred dollars, man. <laughs> yeah. I need to buy some more stocks and I need to fucking uh, buy some more sneakers. All right, bro. Let's... I don't know if I can afford these neutral grays coming out. Oh, come on, man. Yo, so wait, can I admit something to you guys right now about those? What up? So when I saw that twenty three thousand number, mm-hmm. when I because I'm so used to like five thousand, I was like, oh, sick. No. Oh yeah. No. Um. I had to and- rethink about it, and after I was like, wait, that's still so low. But like at first, I'm so fucked up, but from seeing the quantities and some of these shoes, where I was like, twenty three is great. Uh, you know, this is an interesting. This is an interesting shoe to me because I want to see how it genuinely does. In the aftermarket once it releases now if you guys if you go on stock x and you look i'm a size 12 i was looking at the 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 prices as of today um and they're around i think like 800 dollars. you know that's the lowest ask for for these oh uh, my god jesus what Christ, jesus christ chris this is this that's is so a- high is, there, is it surprising i was gonna say are you surprised kind of it's the so oh for the listeners who if you don't know, uh, the neutral gray uh, Jordan ones that we're talking about, they're the 85. So that, like they're the same, like they're a retro of the original Air Jordan one, mm-hmm. which is already gives it a ton of value. And then unfortunately, we all want the Chicago colorway. Yep. They do not want to give it to us. So they were like, you could paint it yourself. Here you go, buddy. And have fun. Um- what I, what I will say is, I, I will say this, and I want, I, my original statement was, I want to see how these do in the aftermarket because they're such a, a plain Jordan one. They're, they're white with gray. And I think in, in the era of the influ- influencer, the social media, I need, you know, something really hot. These aren't it. If that makes sense, these aren't perfect sense. Yeah, these aren't <laughs> no. a pair of Travis Scott ones. These aren't off white ones. These aren't you know even to union ones. These are a plain pair of white with gray Jordan ones. And I want to see how low will the market dip. Um, I think they should be under. And I, and I know this sounds stupid, but it should be under $500 when they release. And 500 is a lot for a $200 sneaker. But these, I think a lot of the, the class, the, the, the collectors are going to go for these. The people who have good taste. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even know these retail at 200 either. Wow. There's a bunch of shit about this shoe. I'm just befuddled by yeah that's the that's the kind of the newest thing about the uh about the the 85s is that they've gone up in value which you know makes me wonder at what point do you guys think we're going to be paying 250 dollars for a pair of jordan ones i'm not it's it's gonna come i i can remember when you know and i know i'm gonna sound like the old man on the podcast but i i I am um when (laughs) i was getting a pair of uh i got a pair of uh bread and Royal Chicago um, Jordan ones uh, in 2001. I was in high school and I think I paid like $70 for them. And even then I was like, God damn, $70 for a pair uh, Jordan ones, you know, but it was like 70 or $80. I think that was the retail. On them. And then we started seeing the jumps, you know, it was $140. Mm-hmm. And that was, you know, t- that was like 2013 when those models started coming out. And then all of a sudden Jordan was like, we could, we could, get another twenty dollars off of these motherfuckers. So we're gonna charge one sixty plus tax. And yeah. then now we're in twenty twenty one and we're like, oh, we're paying two hundred dollars for a pair of Jordan ones, which, you know, you could pay for a pair of fives or fours or sixes with for that same amount of money, you know? Yeah. With, with their technology. So well that's what I'm worried about too, because if the price of the Jordan one goes up, doesn't mm-hmm. that mean that everything else is going to go up? So eventually we're all going to be paying three hundred dollars for concord 11s at christmas you know like, i think i think this is i didn't realize that that's really dangerous because all right so dunks the hype thing right based right. off this model 
right, are generally want to say like 120. That's a fair assessment for a dunk. Year. Right. Okay. Mm. So now, all right. Yeah, we gotta definitely GameStop the shit out of Nike because yo, two hundred dollars. If you want them, Chris mentioned so in our Discord. Uh, Chris Ramirez, we were talking about last week. How do you fix the sneakers app? Right. It's the age old question. It's the it's kind of what's happening with GameStop. Is like you gotta have everybody kind of band together and boycott or something. Like there has to be like an agreement amongst all sneakerheads that hey, we're not gonna buy from here until they fix this shit. Until we get like a pre order system or something. Well, yeah, I don't know. A part to- a part of the problem that we discussed was the people who really want the sneaker aren't the target consumer anymore. It's the people that have the money that just are willing to pay for the hype. Right. Um, sure. We as consumers have already sort of been like we're not doing that. For the most part, you know, they catch us once in a while when they give us the shoe that we want. And we're like, we have everyone has that exception shoe, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't it's it's out of our hands now. We can't GameStop it because the people with the money aren't one, like with us. They're not with the cause. They're like, no, I'll take the hype shoe. I don't care. Yeah, you're right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really like I said, this is a, a one of the sneakers of 2021 that I was really looking forward to. But I, I already know that you know how this is going to play out because uh there was a, a 85 uh jordan release last year it was like the red and black i believe yeah yeah, yeah. uh uh 85 uh jordan one and that was pretty limited and and once again these are supposed to be the the all-star nba releases remember this was this is all-star weekend supposed like around that time even though with the nba this right. year we're not going to get that but um, so I, I expect these to be fully, extremely limited. Um, I just wonder how much people are willing to pay on a, on a white Air Jordan, even though, you know, you can put the gimmick behind it of it being 85 and limited. But I just, I just, that this always, this gives me this one final statement about Jordan ones. They're never going to die. Like, I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks or, you know, people are like, oh, you know, Jordan, they're here to stay because Nike knows that their bread and butter is bread ones, Chicago ones, Royals, right? Yep. And and we got in 2013, we got bread, we got breads, we got Royals. Uh, we didn't get Chicago's in, in the Nike Air cut, but in 2015 we got a pair of Chicago ones, and then in 2016 we got the bread ones with the you know the new remastered model. And then in 2017, we got remastered Royal ones. What Nike will continue to do or whoever's in charge will now we will go from remastered ones to 85 OG bread ones, Royal ones. Yep. And that will just keep the we're just going to keep giving the consumer what they're desperate for, what they're they're clamoring for. So I just don't ever see this shit dying. Also, to your point. Just to, to your point, right? So when they give us like these weirder versions, like the Zoom ones, say they don't make Zoom ones for five years. Yep. Then they can do this shit where they're doing the 85s. Like even though there was no hype on the Zooms really, if there's still perpetual hype on like the Jordan as a model, they're like, all right, we're doing like these crazy Zooms. Everyone's going to be like, all right, Zooms are the shit now. I'll go. Remember yeah. they did those five years ago. I'll yeah, get that. Everyone's going to be like, oh, yo, I remember when I had my Zoom ones. It was fucking great. Like, yeah, I got the ones it. that look like the Dior's and shit. Like, you know, like, does the, that. The, the ones that look like the Brute SBs. Oh. So, yeah, they, they'll be able to do exactly what you're saying, L, except with like the other ones, too. Well, yeah, but I, I always think that, you know, they're, I mean, granted, you know, we see all these different colorways, but they're, you know, what people, the the hardcore collectors and, and sneaker people, there's like three or four colorways that people go crazy for all the time. Like yeah. extreme, like brings out everyone. And that's Bread Royals, Chicago's, and um, to a certain extent, mm, I, maybe Shadows, but I don't think on, on that high, probably I would say Black Toes before that. So there's yes. maybe four colorways that people go crazy for. Um, Chris, you, you were also mentioning, you were saying like, yo, when I saw 23,000 pairs and that that's rumored, I don't know if that's the official, because I believe that that was a rumored number. Right. And then when Nike kind of put the press release out, they didn't include the 23,000. So people are a little like, maybe, maybe not, we don't know the numbers, but, um, there's also a, a trophy room, uh, Jordan one that's coming out. That's uh, what is it? Marcus or Jeffrey or whatever, whatever Jordan's son. Uh, he's got two sons. I think it's Marcus, I believe. <laughs> uh, 
uh, he has a store uh, called Trophy Room, and they're releasing a Jordan One that looks like a Chicago colorway. Uh, it's like a frosty Chicago colorway. And this week, I I posted the picture on uh, on social media or on the Discord, where there was a um, an Instagram reseller by the name of Sneaker Slut Twenty Three, and he posted a picture. <laughs> what a <laughs> what a name! Let's what a name! For a second, and give him that. That's a terrible name in the best. No, way that's possible. a great name. That's a great name. Shut up, Luke. To be a reseller, yeah, it's the perfect yeah. name, but it's it's gross. <laughs> it's fucking disgusting. Do you so, do you think that, that that never mind? Just go. All right, go ahead. So he posts a picture with him. I I would say probably at least at least a hundred hundred and fifty pairs, two hundred pairs of these trophy rooms, and like a looks like some type of storage room. And he writes with the the caption, "Y'all thought I was bullshitting." Twelve thousand pairs made, maybe three thousand hit in the public. And I and I and this is this is what I would say is that's when. If it's true, right, these reseller people are going to try to drive up the price, but that's where it does come to the consumer to say, nah, nah. I mean, I'm, yeah, no, you're right. No, because that that's that's what that's what happens when a lot of these stores, when these resellers get these shits back door, they're paying, you know, a lot of times they're paying eight hundred dollars a pair. But oh, if you shit. if we you know. That, that's the game. That's how backdoor, you know, that's how, you know, resellers work. They, they buy in at a, at a high price, but they're going to flip it for, if they pay 800, they're going to pay, they're going to flip it and sell it to you for 1200. So they're going to make, you know, right. That's where we as consumers need to say, where you, you pay $800 for these sneakers. Let's fucking give you, let's, let's not pay. Hold the line, baby. We're all the line. 400. There you go. Hold the fucking line. Hold the line. Hold the line. And that's what needs to be done. Are you excited for these trophy rooms or not? Ah, uh, no. Nah, nah, them shit's got the fucking glitter f- uh, mold. Mm. It's listen. I'm. Uh, we all want Chicago ones. This is not it, man. It's. It's. I. I would have liked the concept on a different kind of like maybe a different colorway, something more original. I, this just doesn't. It feels very lazy, you know. Well, it goes back to what you know. Ella's been saying about um. Nike in general, they're like, they'll give you 90% or 80%, but you're never going to get the whole thing. Right. No, you're, you're never like, even on these, uh, on the neutral grays, people were like saying how bad this, the toe box is and how the toe box is shaped weird. Like you're, you're never going to get a perfect retro because obviously they want to keep bringing us back somehow, some way. Um, I was I was thinking about this earlier and like Luke was saying, everyone's like Chicago, Chicago's, I want Chicago's. And I was, you know, I I was around and I was fortunate enough to get a pair of uh 2015 Chicago's, man. And I, I, I just remember how bad the height was for those Chicago. You guys will you guys remember the uh the release for that or no? Yeah. I mean, I didn't try to get them, but I remember everyone around me going like, oh shit. Yeah, I do remember everybody being like the Chicago's are back, you know. I, I just literally remember going to every store filling out a raffle, like every store. And I remember the Foot Locker or the Foot Action on 34th Street. It was like, the, you know, the Jordan store. Yeah. And I remember there was like 300 people out there. It was a fucking zoo. And, um, and I was like, well, guess I'm not going to get these. And I, and I had a friend who was like, yo, I, I can get you a pair from my spot. You know, they marking it up to 270. And I was like, the fuck, oh. $270. i am like, I don't want to pay 270 for these shits, man. And he was like, I'll just do it. And 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 I, you know, I paid the 270 and and, and I gave my boy a little something, nothing too crazy. And <laughs> I gave him like I think twenty, thirty dollars. So I basically I paid three hundred dollars. Yeah, you rounded it out. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. rounded it out. Yeah, yeah. And I and I was like, damn, Lawrence, this is not a good trend. No, it's, it's not, not good. No. It's true. But then I look like now where that shoe was at in terms of on the aftermarket and it's like oh 300 like oh wow bro like compared to where it is now yeah and it's like oh and there's no signs of the actual retro coming out anytime soon like i just don't want to see where those go yeah in a year or two because obviously it's all the last dance effect that pushed them up to the moon but dude like we're talking two thousand dollar sneaker right now with yeah. no 
no signs of a retro. It's, I don't know, man. It's it, well, going back to what I said earlier. It's really out of our hands. Like these people, it, it, until we get like celebrities to like stop buying dunks, like this is how it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, or or we have to um, like decide somehow from the underground that like they're not cool anymore. And like, uh-huh. what? What? An idea. What do you got? All the listeners need to make us famous. <laughs> and then we hold on hear me out and then we will be the influencers and then we will tell nike hey yo you gotta make more of this shit bro and then we can solve it from the inside we can be the inside guys dude you, you know they had like kanye west try to like have more producing and they shut him down <laughs> yeah, like so, there's three of us fucking, that was only one guy jerry lorenzo <laughs> like you know like there's plenty of guys who like have tried this i don't think i don't think even though as much as i would love for us to be the guys like i just don't think that's going to well happen. luke you're already on their board of directors that's no i already told you that yeah that yeah, you're right i'm already on the board i'm trying <laughs> everything i can but if i had two more board members with me if i had two more right. board members to right. sway right. the vote we'd have it so mm-hmm. what i mean did you, you you said you brought this up already i brought this up several times okay so how did you like what did you say like let's have a vote <laughs> Like, yeah. what did you? I was like, all right, all right, everybody, everybody on three. Uh, uh, if, if you want the <laughs> Chicago one to come out, uh, s- say what one, two, three, what, what, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, what, mm-hmm. Br- blink if you if you want the Chicago one. I, 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 they want, they want them, they want them. Let's let's make them, let's make them. <laughs> I was uh, on the board for about two hours. <laughs> Oh, you got fired? I got fired very quickly. Oh, uh, damn, bro. I'm sorry. You lost your job. It's fucked up. It's a pandemic. They shouldn't have but, fired you. But, you know, oh, if, if you start up, a, if we start up a, a petition. A change.org? A change.org. Get, get the sub podcast as board of, of Nike. Oh, yeah. They're really going to. Yeah, they'll listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's pretty. No, in all seriousness, it's pretty bleak out here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's fucking let's let's move on i mean <laughs> I can't with you. um i do want to talk about um a good change usually we don't yeah. like change we complain yeah. about change but a change i like is these uh comme des garçons uh phone posits oh you really sped through that one more time for for the listeners how, how do you pronounce that hang on uh... <laughs> How do you pronounce that? Hey, I was self-conscious right. about making the the transition there. So I got jumbled and I yeah, whatever. Fuck you guys. Um <laughs> come de, come, come, yes, come, come de garçon. Um no, we hate change. Uh right. we want what we want is always the OG. Um, but this change I actually like, and I think I mean I'm assuming that you guys like these too. I think these are cool. Yes, these are the Comme de Garçon, Comme de Garçon. Air Force, uh, uh, phone posits, excuse me. Yeah, Air Force posits, yes. Air Force posits. I know, I know sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, look, I'm sure I won't speak for you guys, but I'll speak for you guys and say, like, the coppers are the one, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, no one's ever really changed the shape like this. I've seen people, like, you know, like have weird designs. Like, I guess the last ones that were really a banger, I guess, in most people's eyes were the Supreme ones where they had that, that Versace sort of like foily replicant print. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are the last ones f- for me to make noise. Um, and then these ones, you know, by label are hype. But also that is that's a cool thing that Nike let them fucking switch up the shape. This is wild, bro. This reminds me of that uh, that movie Signs. <clears throat> <laughs> the crop circles the crop circles bro um i was gonna say uh zen garden but yeah sure we can go with mel gibson nah bro the french are trying to tell us something <laughs> I, send us a, a signal i like i i actually like these i'm just scared of what the retail is going to be on these because if you know anything about cdg and nike collabs they bump the price up uh astronomically of yeah. sneakers and um like i I think I have a pair of CDG uh, 180s, and I think the retail on those were like two sixty, two seventy for a hundred and twenty dollar model of of sneakers. So if phone pauses already are at two hundred plus, God, right. God damn! I mean, I, I mean, hopefully these aren't four or five hundred dollars. I'm gonna guess three, um, mm-hmm. just because I can't exactly tell from the pictures, but it seems like they would have had to make a new mold for that shape. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think it's going to be the last time we see this. Uh, I don't know where else they're going to use it because they s- introduced it with a collab. 
Um, but I mean, like paying for that probably costs Nike a lot of money. Like molds aren't cheap, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm gonna guess three. I'll see, yeah, three fifty kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're definitely gonna see you know three three fifty four hundred for these uh, for these sneakers. Um, I am like I said, I'm I'm looking forward to because I feel like the phone posit has has gone in waves of being just a streetwear like fucking MVP sneaker to an afterthought at times. Yes. And, uh, yeah. And as the as the resident uh, old head on this podcast, uh, <laughs> I, I man, I I remember the first time I saw those the pennies. You know, I remember the first time I saw the Royal Blue pennies. It was what ninety seven. Oh, I was gonna yes. Yeah. And it was you know it was the fucking uh, NCAA tournament. It was you know Mike Bibby in Arizona and those guys. And I remember seeing those and and then um, when they released. You know, we were kids, you know, we couldn't afford, you know, I mean, we were, we were fucking kids and we couldn't afford that. Uh, and and I remember, you know, one of my friends had a pair and we were like, yep, your mom paid one, you know, 80 or whatever it was for them. And he was like, yeah. And they didn't retro them for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. And and I remember when they came back out and then that's when they started hitting us with all like eggplants and coppers and all of these like dope coppers. Colors. We're oh five. No, 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 no. Listen, do coppers. The the re- the first penny came out in ninety seven. Right. We didn't get the retro uh, until two thousand and seven. So we got a, it was a whole ten years, and then we started. So from like oh seven, so then like oh eight, oh nine is when we started getting all the oh the retros. Yeah. Okay. Because I was yeah I must yeah I was in college when I saw the coppers for like the as an adult I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's when I was like, yo, because we never really seen a shoe like that. Like, like you said, like, you know, Penny was rocking them on court, but whatever, mm-hmm. we were kids, you know. Mm-hmm. So now I'm thinking back to college when I saw those. I was like, yo, these are crazy. Like, what are those? Yeah. yeah. And we just like I said, the, the retros, man, like that's when the penny line went like it started going crazy, bro. Like we started getting all of these like different colorways. We started getting collabs for pennies. Supreme yeah. Supreme pennies, bro. Like, and then um, the enthusiast came out. Like, Wall A was like, "Yo, foams all day." Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was never. I was. Ne- you guys are making me feel really young right now. Because you are. <laughs> yeah. You you are. You're, a, you're an infant. I am an infant. Because I was like, <laughs> what was it? I was like, what was I doing? I think I was just trying to touch titties. Well, <laughs> I don't remember any of this. I just. I the only thing I remember was the peak, which was the galaxy foams. Mm-hmm. That's like where I re- specifically remember Galaxy, remember Galaxy, and um, what's the pair that I always forget the name of these? I always call it the movie. What's that pair you got, L? That you oh, had for a minute? The, the, the pair oh, the I had was Paranormans. Yeah, yeah. I always oh, call yeah, it the yeah. uh, yeah, paranormal activities. Uh, yeah, paranormal. You ha- you had to draw a picture to get those or something? No, I actually. Uh, they said they wanted you to post a picture of yourself, like you know, doing something weird. <laughs> and this was this was on Twitter. This was like 2000 had to be. When was I? It was like 2012. And, no, yeah, 2012. Okay. And I, okay. I remember this. And I remember um, I remember posting a picture. I went to sleep and I remember waking up and I got a message. And it was like, congratulations. Weird wins. You you want a pair of the select your size. And I think it was like a, a five or six day contest. And, I, and it was like one of the last days of the contest that was left. So there wasn't many sizes left. And I think I just selected, I think, uh, I think a 10 or a nine or some shit because my size is gone. Yeah. And bro, that was it. One of free pair of sneakers that I ended up selling for a couple of racks. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. The yeah. peak of that shoe is definitely the galaxy in that shoe. I think that the paranormal is kind of like over time just because of the elusive nature of them. But like mm-hmm. those two for sure. Par- yeah, I think I think uh, Supreme and I think the like you said, yeah. The, the uh, galaxy joints the uh but I, I, then you know we we had this stretch and then like all of a sudden phones were just like mm. yeah i think it ha- um i don't really know yeah that's a hard thing that's sort of pinned down to why i mean that is the boot sneaker i don't know if it has something to do with those oh the weatherman's too don't forget those um those are those the ones with like the weather map on them yeah the weather yeah i th- i mean those weren't those were 
that was a weird drop. Now that I'm that thinking about after, it. I thought that was like after all of that. That was like, but it of, was a peak. Those that, that did make some noise. I'm trying to remember. Anyway, either way, okay. um, those are like the boot sneaker. I think a lot of people like who don't wear boots will use those as their boot. Um, but I don't. Yeah, it's hard to like. Damn. Yeah, I don't really know how they like come in and out. It's weird. I mean, I think the maybe like this will be the spark of whatever you know, like them coming back. But if it you know if it hits like that. I mean, it's going to hit. They're, they'll sell out for sure. Oh, I mean, those. Yeah, for sure. I just don't know if like the wave will come back, but um, I don't think so. I think that everybody's too distracted with the dunks right now. So maybe uh, maybe it's time we, we take advantage. Maybe that's what we do. We all hold on to foam posits and make it make. A is this where we hold the line is with foams? It's with foams. <laughs> maybe we start with foams and move our way up. So we are we all going to buy or not buy? I don't I don't know. I haven't figured it out. Yet. <laughs> what is holding buy, the line to us? I, I guess we buy the sneak. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the only in, way in we regards, hold the line is with the trophy rooms. We all we all say four hundred dollars. That's say it. 400. That's that's the most you get. Bro. That's the most we're paying. Yo, I'm so down to hold the line. We just got to figure out what that really means. But I'm I'm with it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to go to the moon, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're holding the line at the moon. We're holding the line at the moon, bro. <laughs> Nobody break. If you if you spend over four hundred on trophy rooms, you're trash. You got paper hands, bitch. <laughs> paper hands, diamond hands all day. Diamond hands Woo! all day, yo. <laughs> diamond hands all day. Um, fuck. The, yo, the twenty twenty is a year for sure that we all want to forget. I think twenty twenty one is going to be the real nightmare. I'm not going to lie. It's starting off with a real banger. There was a coup. <laughs> there was a coup against the uh-huh. <laughs> dude. Thinking about this is crazy. There's a coup, and then nerd like weeb nerds crash the stock market. Right. So racists storm the capital, and then weebs ruin our financial system. You know it's gonna happen. In sneakerheads are gonna disrupt Nike. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but it's it, this is the year. This is mm-hmm. the year we do it. I just still wish you were on the board of directors, man. I'm so sorry you got fired. I'm, buddy, we're going to work. We're going to, we're going to, I don't know. We're going to eat the rich somehow. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't know. I've been reading a lot online. Yeah, I have you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, shit. God damn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I do want to say this. I know this is, um, you know, I know this has been all fun and games, but uh, we did have the uh, one year anniversary of the death of Kobe Bryant past. Yes. Um, yeah. This past week, and um, just want to say that you know, it, it still still doesn't feel real. Um, and you know, I just wanted to pay tribute because we we didn't you know obviously that happened midweek. So you know, rest in peace, Black Mamba, and you know all the the um, yeah the people that that lost their lives on the helicopter as well. So um. Yeah, it's a year. That's crazy. It doesn't mm-hmm. feel like a year. Yeah. No, it doesn't. And um, so I think that, you know, that was like the beginning. And I always say that I felt like the beginning of uh, uh, how things were just, uh, you know, how every how things are just fucking going down, you know, hill fast. But um, yeah, you know, just rest in peace. And like I said, always just, you know, have that mama mentality fucking you know, for, for the listeners and people who, you know, you may not be basketball fans, but, you know, you understand, you know, the man lost his life, his daughter, who was, you know, she was, you know, becoming a, 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 a tremendous basketball player in her own right. You know, the other young women who are also trying to change the game of basketball and, you know, to pass away, it definitely, it hurts. So. Yeah. Um, on another sad note, just cause we're, you know, now that we're here, um, our, he's been, I mean, our sixth man on the bench, we always call him that. He's like our go-to guy if we need a guest or another opinion. Um, there was an unfortunate thing in a, at a comedy show in Long Island City where our boy Isaiah, uh, something happened where, you know, I don't know exactly what went down, but he got essentially jumped. Um, there's a GoFundMe. I'm going to put it in the description. Um, but, you know, he had to go to the hospital. I don't know what his insurance situation's like, but I don't think he had an, like a good one or enough to cover whatever, you know, there's like the ambience trip emergency room. He had to stay overnight. Uh-huh. Um, so he's out, he's doing better. Um, he's if vision is still in question on his eye. Yeah. He uh, had the most, uh, the brunt of the attack was on his eye. So uh-huh. yeah. 
and um, he's already, yeah, he's already had bad vision, so it's it's not really good. You know? No, it's it's. I mean, it's the whole situation's not great, especially to get attacked by another comedian is kind of fucked up. Um, mm-hmm. I don't have all the info or info like regarding who it is or what show it was. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, but let's just help Isaiah, our guy, sort of uh, get out of the situation that he's in. Um, and hopefully, you know, his vision stays intact. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just if, if, if there's any, anyone in here, I mean, we've had a couple of listeners already DM me saying that like, that's, you know, they, once they found out that like, that's crazy and they contributed, which is great. Shout out to you guys. Um, anyone else that got some extra change that can throw at it, you know, we'll just leave it in the description. I guess that's that. Yeah. It's going to be in our Instagrams, uh, link. This is going to be the link for a while too. We're just going to try to just get, get the word out there for him because, you know, we really care about him. He's a, He's a good friend of all of ours. Yeah, I fucks with that guy, man. I, I, I fucks with Isaiah, so. Yeah, actually, no lie. He was one of the first people to come up to me after a show, like, as a co- like starting off, like, another comedian going, like, yo, that was a good set. Like, I didn't know this dude. He didn't have, usually, like, comics kind of, like, are reserved, and they don't like to give each other props on this so you can fuck with them or they can help you with your career or whatever. Like, yeah. no joke, like, he came up to me after a show at, uh, it was an urban room, it was at Essence, and he was like, yo, you fucking held it down, bro. Like, usually white guys can't do that shit in here. Like, that's what's up. And I was like, hell yeah, dude. So, I, like, you know, he's he's friendly he's he means good he's so, a good guy yeah. so so not only does he have bad vision but he also must be deaf and um, <laughs> How did- wow 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 well, so we're gonna need to give him double whatever he's asking yeah whatever for. whatever he's asking for let's double that shit because we double need that to shit. Fix, his, <laughs> fix his hearing too <laughs> must be a deaf motherfucker dude. damn love you chris uh, I I really put that on a tee for you guys to just swing at, huh? Yeah. Fucking, I was I was ready for that one. Yeah, I, I like, saw your eyes. I, I when I started the sentence, I was like, oh no, I see Lawrence is <laughs> glistening right now. <laughs> yeah. Lawrence went diamond hands. <laughs> right, fucking diamond hands. I was holding that bitch for a little while. You're supposed <laughs> to hold the line for us, Lawrence. Yeah, I know my bad, yo. <laughs> but now all those aside, get well, get well, Isaiah. I spoke to him. You know, he's definitely he's doing better. But you know, obviously, at the end of the day, you know, it's it's unfortunate, and you know, it's nothing. That's something that should never happen to a a person at a show. No, especially by another comic. That's fucked up. Yeah, it's totally. Yeah, you know. So, um, yeah. But that's yeah, that's it. And uh, I, you know, I'm glad. You know, I'm glad we got those two pieces of information out. And uh, it it kind of ends on a on a somber note. Do you guys have any final thoughts? Um, no. Um, whoa, no, I do. I have. All right. So everyone, you know, I've talked about a life in length, uh, you know, next month being black history month. Um, one of the managing partners is black. I was able to work on this great collab with HBCUs. Um, I'm not going to give more information other than that, but cause it's not out yet, but just guys look forward to it. I put a lot of work into it. Um, it means a lot and I think it's going to do a lot of good, um, shining light onto HBCUs. I don't know if a lot of people, I didn't even really know what an HBCU was. I knew there was like black colleges, but like going through this whole experience and like the homecoming, like, especially at like Howard and shit, like that shit is crazy. I uh, wait, that's, that's HBCUs. That's historically black, black colleges, colleges and, and universities. universities yeah. Okay. yeah. So there's like 19 schools we were able to team up with. We got champion on board. We got urban outfitters on board. It's like a weird collab, but like due to the licensing, like we weren't able to do it on our own. So we got these great partners and I'm just really proud of the project. Um, I mean, I think it's I'm just really excited. So I've just pay attention in the coming weeks um, where uh, a life already does a lot of um, stuff for black history month, shine a lot of light onto some characters that don't get a lot of light. You know, we have those like ones that just say Malcolm X and, you know, we have Breonna Taylor one. We have other ones. So this one is in that sort of vein and I'm just really proud of it. So next month, pay attention. That's cool. Yeah. That's fire, bro. That's what's yeah. up. Uh, last Thursday. So on Thursday, we had we're we're releasing we probably just released it just now but we had a, a bonus episode come out with uh brendan sagalo a comedian friend of ours uh please give that a listen that was a f- very fun time me and chris went in and we uh we did a short interview of our friend trying to promote his album uh yeah that was that's definitely worth checking out it was very funny i want everyone to know he does wear adidas track pants with air force ones i just want that to be so super take, clear take everything he says with a grain of salt <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fun, but yeah, definitely check it out. Um, but I think that's sort of it. Uh, do we have? Should we talk about the guest we're gonna have? Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, so you know, we talked about the Dexter, the creator, sort of like all-in-one Velcro joint or whatever. Um, we actually reached out. Uh, we we're trying to set up a time. He's down to do the pod, so we're gonna have him. And like, you know, in the coming months, 
two weeks is our three year anniversary. Uh, so we got a special surprise for you then. And then we got to have a bunch of big guests lined up that are going to end up doing the pod, uh, you know, for the three year anniversary. So it's very exciting. Yeah. Looking forward to it. And I think that's it, though. Um, El, you got any final thoughts? Uh, nah, just uh, everyone just be safe out there. Love each other. You know, what I mean, keep fucking trying to drive the prices down on on these uh, on these sneakers and drive the price of some of these stocks up because. Yep. I can't be broke no more, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, so. One last time, just at not that teeny uh, Cheney at Trevisus at LZD three two five. Shut up, Luke. Um, at sub podcast NYC. Fuck you, Luke. Your haircut sucks. Um, <laughs> you have a dumb haircut and a dumb face. <laughs> uh, join the our Discord. Pro- Wait, what's up, Bill? Pro- our producer, Three Meanie. Three, three Meanie. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. And make sure you give us five stars on the motherfucking iTunes, all right? Because I ain't got time for this no more. Five stars yeah, and a great yeah, review, all right? Stars, please. Yeah, do that shit. Three years, Thank motherfuckers. You. Some of you that have been listening for three years and haven't done shit. No, I'm kidding. You guys are great. No, no, no. He's not kidding. He's not kidding. <laughs> He's being honest. He's not kidding. Review. And and five stars. Come on, Take guys. our podcast to the moon. All right. Take Thank us you. to the moon. Hold the line with us, boys. Peace. <laughs>